Hi, I'm Ginger and welcome to my channel, The Copycat Quilter. I want to teach you how to make the quilts that you see and love without a pattern. Now, a lot of times when I look on Facebook and I'll see some really pretty quilt that I love and the first comment in the block is, who's the pattern by or what pattern is this? And you know, I look back at that pattern and I'm like, hmm, this pattern has two blocks and they're just rearranged in a way that makes them look like curves or makes a secondary pattern, I can make that pattern. And so I wanna help you learn to do that too. Now I do have one rule on my channel that I'm going to strictly enforce, and that is you're not allowed to say, this is too hard, I couldn't possibly do this, I don't know math, I don't like this, la 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 la. I want you to put those thoughts aside and just think, hey, I can do this, let me just follow through and practice what Ginger's showing me. You know, I took piano for a very long time as a kid, all the way up through high school, and I had teachers that taught to play the notes on the page, and that's great. That was an important education for me. Then I got this teacher in high school who was a Southern Gospel player, and man, every song she played was up and down the keyboard with all this improv and chord structures and things, and she had the most unusual way of documenting her songs for me to practice. She wrote them out in ballpoint pen in a spiral notebook with letters and dots and just all kinds of annotations. Now that I've, I look back to try to read, I might be, hmm, I'm not sure how to do that. But many years after that, I was playing in a church and it was a small informal church and the director started a song and then stopped almost immediately and turned to me and said, um, let's try taking that down a couple of keys because it's too high for me. And I froze with like deer in the headlights. I'm like, I don't know how to transpose. I don't know how to change a key without maybe sitting down and writing it all out, you know, to play from. And he was like, oh, just try it. Just see what works. And so in my head, I'm like, okay, what have I got to lose? I'm in front of a crowd. Let's go. So um, I think maybe the, it was in the key of F. And I'm just like, okay, well, D is a couple of keys lower. Let's try D. I know how to play in D. And I started playing. And as soon as I gave myself permission or argued with myself and told myself to shut up when I said I couldn't transpose, I started playing and it was just natural to me. It was very easy and just came to me immediately. So I focus a lot on make sure that the things that you're telling yourself aren't stopping you from doing what you know you can do. So let's put all that aside and let's get started looking at a quilt, figuring out how you can make it without a pattern. Let's take a look at this quilt. I like this one because it has a lot of motion and a lot of secondary patterns. And it looks like it has curves, even though it's all straight lines. I especially like how like this section looks like the stars form a circle. Usually when I find a quilt that I like, I will start looking in the corners to see if I can find a complete block. So in the top left corner of this quilt, the star isn't really complete. It only has the three triangles and it's not like the compass with all four points. So let's look at this one instead. And you can see the white around this uh, compass with points really looks like a circle. Like it, it looks like it's, it's got curves to it. So if we look at that section, I can see that it's made up of two different types of blocks. It has a triangle block and it has nine patch square blocks. If I look across the quilt, I really don't see anything other than those kinds of stars. Everything is either a nine patch block or a triangle block. So that makes it easy. If you see across the row that that one is, there's actually three of those repeated. So here I've drawn out to show it is a nine. This is a basic nine patch and it's made up of smaller nine patches and the four triangles. So those are the only two blocks that I'm going to need for this quilt. One other thing I wanted to show is that the nine patches in this quilt form diagonals. So if I take one a row of the nine patches and go all the way across, you'll see it makes a diagonal and I think that's one of the things that gives this quilt so much movement is these strong diagonals and then those triangles whoops <laughs> these strong diagonals and then those triangles make the curves appear 
So let's go look at how we can make this quilt and then we'll follow those diagonals whenever we get to the layout. Okay, so let's take a look at the two blocks that make up the quilt that I just showed. So one of these blocks is a very simple nine patch. Uh, you'll see I draw lines on my wool pressing mat so that I can uh, kind of see if things are lined up straight. This is pretty straight. I may have kind of stretched a little corner there. Anyway, um, so this is a basic nine pack. I have three rows and three columns and three times three equals nine. And you can see this is a combination of a light in the middle with two darks, a dark in the middle with two lights, and another light in the middle of two darks. So there's two ways you can do this. You can use individual squares. So I could take light and dark squares and make a patch, make a strip with the two whites and the dark, or I could make a dark with a light in the middle. One thing I did here, whenever I was putting these together, I did not use this method. And I ended up with some two blocks that I'm going to have to figure out how to get another color on or, yeah, I'm going to have to work that out. <laughs> I'm not the biggest in planning ahead. But this is not the way I really like to do these kinds of blocks. I prefer strip piecing when I can. I think mean, maybe it's just a little faster and I'm kind of more into that instant gratification. So I love to cut strips, sew them together, cut them apart, and make little fancy blocks like that really incredibly hard nine patch over there. I use the AccuQuilt to do a lot of my cutting and I'll put a link to what I use there but please believe me I am not at affiliate status as of the time of this filming so if you click through that link it doesn't send me any money or anything I'm not making any money off of that purchase. So these are two and a half strip two and a half inch strips that I've cut using AccuQuilt. Now as long as we're talking about that let me talk a little about size because we all know size does matter. So for this block, I like to use pre-cuts. And for me, a two and a half inch strip is a pre-cut. You know, you can go buy those jelly rolls. So if whenever I'm looking at what size I want to make a block, I try to figure out what's the easiest. Um, if I have two and a half strip, two and a half inch strips, and I can cut them into two and a half inch strips, sew them together, make two and a half inch blocks, then that's, I'm going to end up with a six inch square. Now I'm talking finished. So this is two and a half, two and a half, two and a half. I sew it together. Once you take out the quarter inch seam allowances on both sides, I'll end up with a six inch block. But right now it's measuring six and a half. So please don't let all that math get to you. Three two and a half inch strips sewn together will make a six inch strip, two, two, two. So what I'll do is I'll take these strips and I sew them together into long pieces and then press them open. Um, for this particular block, you'll see we need one set of strips that's dark on each side with light in the middle. And then I'm going to need two of those for each block. And then in the middle, I'm going to need two lights with a dark in the middle. And that gives me the contrast that I need. One thing about not planning ahead is that whenever I did this before, I've ended up with a lot of blocks with lights in the corners because I really wasn't paying much attention. <laughs> so I'll figure out something else to do with those. But for now, uh, I'm going to go with this darks in the corner and the lights in the insides of this nine patch. So I just wanted to run through this quickly to show you. I have my two and a half inch strips. Um, I'm using a white on white as my background fabric. And you know, if I have to look at that and look closely and try to figure out which side is the right side, I call the one that I put together the right side. Um, as busy as these scrappy quilts are and with all the movement in it, if someone's staring at it looking close enough to see if it's a white on white print and you got the right colors together or the right sides together, they're not my friend. And I'm sewing on this old, old, old sewing machine. It's a Singer Featherweight. I got one last year. I have a couple of computerized machines and much more expensive quilting machines. And I love this little baby. Um, it's very relaxing. It has the kind of softer yellow light and not LEDs or blue lights like uh, the computer screen that I look at all day. 
And I just like the sound. It kind of reminds me of when I was a kid and uh, listening to my mom. So. so let me see if I can get this going. It does have a weird little foot pedal. I've got my quarter inch guide on there so that I'm sewing a perfect-ish quarter inch. And we just cruise along. This strip is actually the full length of the full width of fabric, so it'll be about 42 to 44 inches long. And I would just keep going and going and going. be able to see that I'm using darker thread. I really don't care what color thread I'm using because I'm mixing light fabrics and dark fabrics and I use a pretty small stitch so even if I pull it apart I don't see black or dark thread in there. So good enough. Okay so I have my strips and I'm sure you've seen strip pieces before but I thought I'd just show you a really quick little overview in case you haven't. Typically, I would do this on my Aki quilt. I would take the two inch strip cutter, lay these on it sideways, and I would end up with two and a half inch sections. But I'll show you the old fashioned way. Slower, less accurate, but sometimes comes in handy if my Aki quilt isn't set up already. So I'm just going to line it up on one of the lines. Again, I am not the precise quilter, that's a different channel and I'll cut off the edge to make it straight. And I'll do some two and a half inch strips. I do try to line these up on a line so that I get like the addition of coming down this side and going across those lines to try to be somewhat accurate. And I'll just cut one more. If I could get it lined up. <laughs> I'm so used to cutting with Aki Quilt, I can't cut with a rotary cutter anymore. Okay, I lied one more. Line it up, get this on a line. So that's on a line, this is on a line, two and a half inch section. I'm only going to cut a few of those. And then I have the ones, that's the white or the light on each edge, and then uh, the dark in the middle and the lights on the outside. So this is the one with the darks on the outside. Dragging strings along. That one's full width of fabric. I'm not going to cut them all right now. I think you've probably all seen people cut strips before. And I don't want to use the same strips on a block. So I like mine to look scrappy. So I will not be using two of the same squares, sorry, well, I'm using two of the same, line this side up at the two and a half mark, line that up to where it's on the lines, and a two and a half inch section, one more for this block. And there are the pieces for the nine patch that goes in the middle of this design. And I'm back at the sewing machine. So one of the standard kind of quilt rules that you can break if you want to is to press to the dark side and it keeps the uh, darker fabric from showing through the light. But one advantage of doing that here that I would recommend is when you do that, and we sew these two sides together, these seams will nest. So they'll fit nice and snug together. That will help me to get those points where the corners match. I can feel that those are nesting, that the seam going this way and the seam going that way are matching.
and I can go ahead and sew this onto this, but I don't want these on the same side, so I'll sew it this way. And this seam is pointing up, that seam is pointing down. They will nest together really nicely. Or at least that's the plan. And as Brenda at Mount Scrapmore would say, ta-da. So look how nice those corners are meeting. I will go and iron this and be back. So I am back with the blocks that I made with the dark on the outsides and the lights on the inside. It's a basic nine patch, one, two, three, four, five. Nope, <laughs> one, two, three by one, two, three. And we all know three by three equals nine. In case you have trouble with quilt math, I have a very special guest coming up and she has a bachelor's of science in math and physics and she's going to help confirm and help teach us some really complicated math that you're going to need when you're making quilts. So the other block in that pattern, in that quilt that I liked, is this triangle. This is an isosceles triangle. I know that's very scary. I'm sorry. Isosceles triangles mean that each side measures exactly the same. So this side measures the same as this side, measures the same as this side. So I'll show you in a little bit how to make these, but I wanted to point out, this is going to be a six inch square. It measures six and a half by six and a half now. So I need this square to also measure six and a half by six and a half. So when we're figuring out how to make this square, this triangle triangle, this triangle in a square, you're going to need this part to equal six and a half inches and you're going to need a little quarter inch place there. So how do I do this? I have AccuQuilt and in the 12 inch companion cube, the one with angles, I believe, there's corners and angles, I think this is angles, there is a die that cuts these side pieces for you and the triangle for you. But I'll also show you how to do it with a little bit of math involved, so um, to be able to figure it out. One thing too, you could make this kind of wonky if you're having trouble getting the angles and everything just right. Make a triangle that's at least six and a half. Slap some uh, side pieces on it to make it sort of a square and then cut that square into six and a half inches. The only thing you want to be careful of if you're doing it that way, and really who cares about being careful when you're doing wonky, but you want to try to keep a quarter inch seam there so you don't cut your point off. If the point goes all the way up to the top, then your point will be blunted and won't have a point. Again, big deal. A, cra a scrappy quilt like this, you're never going to see that a point is cut off anywhere. So all of the magic in this quilt comes from the layout. I have a nine patch and I have four yep. of the triangles pointing out away from it. And I'll put a nine patch in each corner as soon as I sew that one. The only kind of tricky thing that comes up then is sometimes your triangles are going to be pointing away from the nine patch like a compass, but sometimes, like on this square, once we get over to here, the triangles may be pointing to the nine patch instead of away from it. So I'll show you that on the big quilt. It's still not difficult if you arranged all of your big blocks into these nine patches. Guess what nine patch again? One, two, three by one, two, three. This is a big old giant nine patch. If you arrange these into nine patches this way, then you could look at what needs to go beside it and make another big nine patch, have your triangles going the right way and it would work out just fine. I just want you to know that sometimes the triangles are pointing away from the nine patch, sometimes they're running alongside it, and sometimes they may, may be pointing in at the nine patch. Okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video and um, this quilt that I made, I don't have a name for it. Sometimes I do name my quilts, but this one, I think I saw it probably on Pinterest and just enjoyed looking at it and figuring out what the blocks would be and how to lay them out to make that great movement and curve look. Um, 
I have another quilt that I did name that I called Doesn't Follow Instructions that was a guild challenge. And uh, I kind of misunderstood some of the rules or some of the criteria for the quilt. So mine is like uh, the weird cousin in the corner that doesn't look like the rest of the family. But it was a lot of fun to make. I do want to give you one hint about how I keep these things beside my machine so that whenever I want some little mindless kind of sewing, it's right there ready to go. So this is one of those art bin containers you can get at Joann's. Um, I think this one is a 12 inch and it's maybe two or three inches tall. What I do on these kind of scrappy quilts is I go ahead and throw strips in here whenever I've cut some two and a half inch strips and maybe I have some left over. Um, I just finished one of these quilts recently so I don't have a lot of strips in here. I need to grab some out of my other bin. Um, I cut the triangle pieces so that I can start sewing those and it looks like I've probably sewn all of those up already. And then I do the uh, strips and things for the nine patches. I keep this by my machine so that uh, whenever I want a little mindless sewing and I don't want to have to think a whole lot and I just want something to, to sew and play with and relax with, I'll put this beside my machine and grab these pieces and just make blocks till I'm out of time to make any more blocks. I did start these and kind of mess these up because I realized after I had done them that I'm not ending up with the three piece uh, strips like I like, so these may just turn into little four patches to put in another quilt, or I may take the time to sew another thing on there and finish them up to be nine patches. That is yet to be determined, and you'd have to watch another video to see that. So thanks for sticking with me till the end. Um, please hit that like, subscribe, notification button, share with any other quilters that you think might enjoy this, and why don't you leave a little comment down there underneath to tell me um, if there's a certain block or a quilt that you've seen that you would like me to try to uh, pick apart and show you how to make without a pattern. Thank you for visiting. This is Ginger with the Cobby Cat Quilter. See you next time. Okay, blooper outtake number one. I'm cruising along and guess what? The sewing machine won at Bobbin Chicken and I sewed the rest of the strip with no bobbin. Thank you very much.